This is a video about using motion capture for making pretty much all of the animations you would need to create a character in a video game. My name is Woody and I make content about Unreal Engine inside Unreal Engine. I'm making this little cozy game with a character that I made in Blender and I need new animations for it. I know what you're thinking, Woody, why would you do mocap? You could just animate this simple little character. It wouldn't take very long. Normally I think I'd agree, but today's sponsor kind of changes my opinion on that. Today we're gonna to be using the Sony Mocopi to be able to get all of our mocap. The Mocopi is a portable motion capture system that fits in your pocket and it connects to an app on your phone, which you can use to record directly, or you can record little videos or send it to Unreal Engine or Unity or VR Chat or Motion Builder or whatever. But today I'm just gonna be using it with the phone app and I'm gonna be recording a little bit of mocap and then we're gonna be using that for our game animations. My name is Woody and I make content about Unreal Engine inside Unreal Engine. Now, if you've never set up a custom character in Unreal Engine before, you should watch my previous video. I take the standard third person mannequin template and I change it out so that it has my special character. Let me make a little custom list of all the actions that I wanna be able to do. I wanna create a custom walk cycle for this character. I want a custom jump. I wanna be able to pick things up off the ground and hold something to exclaim. In fact, there's a number of animations I want that are just little interactions using tools and stuff like that, like digging or chopping down a tree or fishing. So let's go down our list. We're gonna start with a simple walk cycle. You can do this thing on the Mocopi where you can lock the hips and then it'll keep the hips locked in place. But I find that that kind of changes the way that it solves a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it for now and I'm gonna zero out the hips later. So next we're gonna do a jump. This is easy. I'm gonna do that little thing that they do in Animal Crossing whenever they find something. All right, let's do chopping a tree. So let's talk about getting our custom animations into Unreal. Now you can see I already have a character with some preset animations here. However, they're the stock animations, the ship with Unreal. Now it's worth noting that Mocopi saves BVH files. Unreal Engine doesn't use BVH files. It uses FBX files. I tried downloading a plugin, but I couldn't really get that to work. So what I did was I manually converted everything into Blender. This gave me a couple hiccups. I actually needed to create a skeleton as the existing Mocopi skeletal mesh didn't directly target. But once I got through it all, I was able to export everything as an FBX and I brought it into Unreal fairly easily. You should note here that the industry standard way of changing animations for using Blender or Maya or Motion Builder is to change the animations while they're in the program and then bring them into Unreal Engine. However, I'm gonna show you today how to do this stuff once it's already inside Unreal Engine. There are a couple of distinct advantages that we have from working directly in Unreal that I think you'll see throughout this video. Plus the animation tools are just getting better and better all the time in this thing. To make this process easier, I went into the Mocopi app and I looked for all the takes that I liked. Then I went into the Files app found the BVH files and then emailed them. What's amazing is I sent like 20 animations and all of them fit in one email. In my previous video, we made an IK asset that we could use for retargeting with this custom character. If you wanna know more about that, go back and check that video out. It's a really great intro to retargeting. Since we already have this set up, it's really easy to transfer the animations over from the Mocopi because the Mocopi also has an IK asset that's built in when you install the Mocopi plugin which I also have a guide about. Sorry, this is too many references to other videos. I was able to take the Mocopi asset and apply it to the character I made as a pre-visualizer in Blender. One of the tricky parts about using the BVH format is that they don't necessarily have meshes attached. So in Blender, I had to improvise and I made this funny looking cube man. He doesn't look as good as the Mocopi avatar, but he has the exact same skeleton and all of our animations are exactly the same. You just have to look at this ugly cube man, I'm sorry. It was really easy to get this process started. I just used two IK rigs that I already had and created a retargeting asset. One of the reasons I love Unreal Engine's animation tools is because this retargeting screen is so powerful. You'll notice my character's head is up a little bit too high. I can make that adjustment using the reference pose in edit mode. You can make multiple retarget poses and save them. 
which means you can make per animation adjustments. So I can edit the target's chin and point it down a little bit and suddenly things look a lot more correct. There's a lot of advanced stuff you can do in retargeting in Unreal Engine. I noticed that my character's arms were clipping through her during the walk cycle. So I adjusted them in the reference pose as well. Now the arms are IKs, so I turned off the IK solvers for the arms so that they could move more freely. And that seemed to do the trick. I also noticed that the head was bobbling, which kind of looks weird during animation. In both of the IK assets, I went through and created head goals with the IKs so I could turn on IK for the head solving. Look at that, so much better. Let's talk about setting up a walk cycle. Now our character already has one. She has a blend space that has the default animations of walking and running. We're gonna set up a walk cycle using some of that stuff as a reference point. Go ahead and make a duplicate of the blend space so that we have one we can change freely. Here's the default cycle, which looks entirely unsuited to this character. Now we have a free roaming animation, so this doesn't work. If I drag and drop this in, you can see it is just comically bad. It's super weird. So we'll open Unreal Sequencer and we can adjust this. Whenever I have to do an animation asset like this, I create a blank level. I find it's much less visually overwhelming. Place your character into the scene and create a new sequencer asset. Open the sequencer and track your character. Go to animation and add our walk cycle. I found it really helpful to duplicate my character and then give her the default walk cycle so that I could use that for comparison. Let's edit this thing. Right click on the model and hit edit with FK control rig. You can leave most of these settings default. Now we have keys. Unreal made more keys than I needed so I deleted some of them. We have keys for every single bone. Find pelvis and then find your location properties. We want to delete all of these keys so that everything is just at 0, 0, 0 and stays that way. And look, now our walk cycle is standing in place. A lot of mocap systems have a treadmill function or a lock hips feature, but I found that this produced better results when walking when using Mocopi. Now, how do we get this to loop? You want your first set of keyframes to be just before a first step. Unreal by default has three whole steps taken and then ends. So I set my last set of keyframes as close as I could to look like the first step. And then I copied over my first key and then pasted it at the very end of the animation so that everything would loop perfectly between the first key and the last key. I'm pretty happy with that result. We can now bake out the animation and use it as an asset. Right click and hit bake animation sequence. And there we go, here's our walk cycle. Let's go back to our blend space and we can add in our new animation. This blend space operates directly on the speed of the character. I know that this walk is slower than the default walk, so I'm taking our asset and I'm pushing it further down the line towards the left, towards the slower side. Now I delete the other assets so it's only just ours remaining. Let's go back to our animation blueprint. It's time to change out our old asset for the new one. In the anim graph, in the state machine, we can find walk run, and then we can change out the old blend space for the new blend space. Hook your speed into the new blend space and it should work seamlessly. I noticed that we're moving a little bit too fast for the animation. In some cases, this would mean we would wanna speed up our animation and mess with that. But in this case, I kinda of wanted the character to be slower. So I changed the blueprint max speed. You can change the speed by going into the blueprint and going into your class defaults. You can type in speed and find max speed. Much better and just the pace that I want for my game. Let's do our custom jump animation. Jumping has three parts and this makes it really tricky. Let's go back to our new level and let's make another sequence. Drop your character in and track it. Let's assign the character our custom jump animation. Now go into your content browser and grab the mesh of the mannequin. We're gonna bring this in and we're gonna clone it three times. This may give you a little bit of trouble as a default control rig will often spawn. Make sure to delete it first so that you can add animation assets. You wanna have three mannequins that are all tracked in sequencer and each should be assigned a different part of the jump animation. The jump animation, the falling loop animation and the landing animation. Now our character should have all three of those things because we recorded our jump. We need to break up our jump animation into three different parts. However, you won't have quite as much data on the fallen loop, but we'll get into that in a second. Right click on our character and select edit with FK control rig again. 
we're gonna exchange our animation asset for a control rig again, and we're gonna extend the loop artificially. Go ahead and delete most of the back half of the frames of the animation. Now, we're gonna find the top of the jump, the very top of the jump, and we're gonna go down into our pelvis. This is really important. And let's delete all the location keyframes so that our character just hangs in the air. See, now she just hangs when she's up. This is our first animation, so take the little red bar at the end for the end of the animation and drag it all the way to the end of the keyframes. We're gonna right click on the character and then we're gonna bake animation sequence. There's our custom jump, time for the falling animation. Let's go back up to that point that's the height of our jump. We don't have a whole lot of keys remaining at this point because I didn't jump very high because I don't jump very often. Let's move up our start frame so we just have the beginning of that falling action. You can see how this is going with the mannequins next to us. Looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna delete the jump asset because we're not gonna really need it for our reference anymore. Now I'm gonna do something that's a little weird and a little tricky. I'm gonna delete all the other keyframes and I'm gonna take the ones I have and I'm going to get more distance between them by using the stretch bars, that little gray tab right there. If you stretch it out in both directions, you can increase the distance between the frames. Let's get it to about here. Now let's move back our ending time. We can start to copy the keyframes and then space them out so that they reset a little bit. It's a really easy, quick way to be able to get an animation. The animation will automatically loop back in between the spaces. To make sure that our asset itself loops, I'm gonna copy the very first set of keys from the beginning and put it right at the end, just like we did with the walk cycle. Time to bake out another animation asset. Now, this just leaves us with the landing, which we already have. We're gonna have to delete the control rig and reactivate our animation. I've deleted the other mannequins and I'm looking at the last one as a reference for the landing. You can see it's actually got a pretty short duration. I'm gonna line them both up so they both catch themselves at the same time. I'm gonna move up my ending time and now we can bake our last asset. Let's go back to our animation blueprint. We're now gonna swap out all the old animations with the ones we just made. Go into the anim graph and double click on the main state state machine we can find all parts of the jump here in these individual states. The way state machines works is fascinating, but if you're in a hurry, all you have to do is just start swapping out assets from the asset browser. We'll replace the jump with our custom jump. Same with the falling loop. And finally, the land gets plugged into this additive. Now our cat lady can jump. It looks a little funky, in the blueprint, I changed the jump velocity to be not quite so high. This made things look a lot better. A jump really works if it looks good during a long fall. We didn't quite get there, but maybe I just need to learn how to jump higher or something so we can get more frames. But what about all that other stuff we wanted to do? This character is supposed to be able to dig and chop wood and even go fishing. We need a testing button an ability to be able to press a button and watch the character fire an animation montage. We're gonna set this up in the blueprint. We're gonna find our inputs using the enhanced input system. In third person and in input, we can find all of our actions. So we're gonna create a new one. Once again, we can just type it in. Type in input action. I'm gonna call it test animation. You can open up the asset, but there's nothing we really need to do here. We're gonna open this up in the action mapping context. Click the little plus button, let's add our mapping. We can now pick our inputs. I'm just gonna use the enter key for now. Now I'll be able to find our input in the blueprint. I can add it now. I'm gonna pull it from the started execution and I'm gonna type in animation montage. We don't actually have a montage yet, but they're pretty easy to get. Let's take a quick detour and get our animations, and I'm gonna show you how to set them up as montages. If you haven't already, go back through your retargeter and get all the assets that you need. Once again, I've made a sequencer in a blank level with my character, and I've loaded up the animation that I'd like to turn into a montage. I'm gonna edit things first and crop the ends before I make the conversion. This animation is an axe swing, and there's no real way to tell if that worked correctly until we actually put an axe in the scene. 
So I'm gonna use an attach track and attach it there. We won't actually have it in the game until we create that blueprint logic, but this is a really good way to preview whether the animation is gonna work properly when we start adding items to the game. I've isolated the action and I think that looks pretty good. Time to export. Right click on the animation in the content browser and then move up to create and select anim montage. This is now a montage. We could elaborate further, but this video is long enough. It's worth noting that inside the anim graph in the animation blueprint, we have this default slot. This is actually where the animation montages get loaded during runtime. They get placed at this position in the animation chain. We see it's right before the end, which means it's gonna override basically anything. So when we do our little test, we're gonna see this animation play ahead of the walk cycle, ahead of the jumping, ahead of all of that stuff. Finally, we can go back and we can set up our montage. We're gonna select the asset we want, and we're gonna make sure that our skeletal mesh component is inserted, and here's our result. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to zero out the root, so I we have a little bit of a weirdness that happens with the swing of this thing, but hey, it's work in progress. This is looking pretty cool. I think you guys get the idea of how to set up the montages. This is how we can transfer in custom animations that we've recorded with motion capture all in a day. Thanks for watching this video. Also, thank you to Sony for making the Mokopi, for sending me one and for sponsoring this video. I'm really excited to keep using the system in unconventional places and using it to make games and all sorts of kind of things. Thanks everybody.